In this video, we'll look at putting together flow control loops in ChemCAD. If you follow along with this as we go through and master the skills you see in this video, you'll be able to size a control valve, link the control valve to its controller and other flow sheet elements, set the control valve parameters, and set the PID controller parameters. We're going to discuss these operations in the context of a tempered water system. You can see the process flow diagram for a portion of the system in this slide. We basically have a flow of 100,000 pounds an hour of water flowing through the main header. We're going to take a side flow that's about 50,000 pounds an hour. That's going to be the basis for sizing our flow control valves and our flow controller. The tempered water flowing in the header has a temperature of 180 degrees Fahrenheit. First step is going to be to size the control valve. We're going to size it for 50,000 pounds an hour, as I mentioned previously with a 10 PSI pressure drop across the valve. The 10 PSI is a typical rule of thumb parameter for sizing control valves. So I've got the basic flow sheet set up in ChemCAD. I've already defined water as my only component. If you look at stream one, you can see that that's 100,000 pounds an hour of water at 180 degrees Fahrenheit and 30 PSIG. I've got a divider to take the side stream. That divider is right now set up to pull the side flow of 50,000 pounds an hour. So the first thing we need to do is run the divider so that now you can see stream 2 has a flow of 50,000 pounds an hour, stream 3 has a flow of 50,000 pounds an hour. Next step is going to be to size the control valve. To do that, I'll need to select the stream entering the valve. I can then either size it by right-clicking that stream, and you see I've got an option to, for control valve sizing, or I can do this from the menu under sizing control valve. Either way gets me to the same menu. Um, I need to tell the sizing dialog the downstream pressure that's going to be 20 PSIG, 10 PSI less than the incoming water. That's the only thing I need to set. I can accept the default values for the critical flow factor and the correction factor. Say OK and I, and I get this report. You can see that the valve size is 0 0.2083 feet. That's two and a half inches and the the capacity coefficient is CV is 54. Now that we have the valve sized, it's time to link the control valve to the controller and set some parameters for the valve itself. To make those settings, I'll select the valve, right click, go into the edit unit op data. First thing I want to do is set the operating mode. Uh, ChemCAD will either let you fix a flow rate and adjust the valve position to balance the flow rate position and pressure drop. That's not what we want to do in this case. In this case, we want to fix the valve position, adjust the flow rate based on the pressure drop we have across the valve. The other way is you can fix the flow in the valve position and calculate the pressure drop across the valve. But in this case, we're going to be manipulating the valve position to set the flow. We want to set this as a linear valve. And the next setting you can see is this controller ID. You need to tell the valve unit operation which controller is setting the valve position. In this case, it's the controller ID is 3 for the unit op 3. Uh, you can see I've already got the 20 PSIG downstream pressure. It's inherited that. We'll let ChemCAD calculate the valve position. There's another controller specification we need, two other controller specifications we need to put in. One is the time constant for the valve. We're going to use two tenths of a minute for that, just as a rule of thumb number. And the other thing is the valve unit operation sets the flow through the valve, but that doesn't back propagate through the other calculations. So instead, the valve unit operation has an option to send the mass flow to another part of the flow sheet. So in this case, what we want to do is say the mass flow through the valve is actually the flow in stream 3, which is a specification for the divider, which is unit operation 1. So in the dialog, we'll say equipment ID 1. And the variable we're going to set is outlet stream, output stream 2. So that's everything I need to set for the flow control valve. The next thing to do is to set up the PID controller itself. So we'll need to set the control variable, the set point, tell it something about the span of the input, define whether it's a forward or reverse action controller, link it to the valve, and set our control parameters. To do these, I select the controller, edit unit op data, 
we need to activate the controller portion of the dialog at the bottom that says measured object this takes the place of a sensor or a transmitter so what we're going to tell the controller is that we want to as our measured object take the flow rate of stream 5 which is our final product from this loop so stream 5 the variable is the total mass rate help out chemcad by selecting the internal unit as molar mass our set point our default set point is 50,000 pounds an hour this controller sensor function is just whether it wants, you want it to be linear or quadratic for flow element and actually for most elements in modern systems any nonlinearities in the sensors are dealt with elsewhere in the control algorithm we can just select linear most of the time for the sensor equation terms this is really setting the span of the input variable so let's say we want to control between 20,000 pounds an hour and 80,000 pounds an hour and the you can see the way this is set up the variable minimum right now is lined up with 4 milliamps variable maximum is, is lined up with 20 milliamps in this case we want a reverse acting controller so I'll select that here we need to tell the controller unit operation what valve we've got and in this case that's unit operation 2 we need to set the controller parameters themselves. A good rule of thumb for flow control loops is a proportional band of 125 in an integral time of two tenths of a minute. If you want, you can tune from there, but this is probably going to be a good starting point. On the miscellaneous settings tabs, there's nothing we need to do for this simple example. So I can accept these. Uh, I've also got a ramp set up here. This ramp is set up so that we can do some step changes on the controller set point and watch how the system responds. So let's go ahead and set up the ramp. The ramp is going to control for equipment three, the variable uh, set point, which is item six for this unit operation. And remember our characteristic times on the order of two tenths of a minute. So Let's start at our set point of 50,000 pounds an hour. And let's get, let it go for nearly two minutes at the 50,000 pounds an hour. Then at two minutes, we'll drop it to 40,000. Let it go for just about two minutes. Raise it to 60,000 pounds an hour. Raise it to 60,000 pounds an hour. Let it go for another two minutes. Drop it back to 50,000 pounds an hour. And then drop it back to 50,000, drop it back to 50,000 pounds an hour at six minutes, and we'll just run it out for another two minutes. Okay, so we have this set up. Now we need to set up the parameters for the run itself. Before we do that, we need to put the system into dynamic mode. Once we're in dynamic mode, we can set the step size. So my ramp was to go over an eight minute period, so we'll let that total be eight. Since my time constants are on the order of two tenths of a minute, I'm going to set my time step to be a tenth of a minute. And in theory, we'd be ready to go. But the system started out not converged, not at steady state. So what I'm going to do initially is I'm going to disable the ramp so that the system is going to run simply with the, the set point of 50,000 pounds an hour. Let's record some variables as we go through here. Let's record the flow rates for streams three, or let's stream five, since that's our output, and stream two, which is the water that's not going to our output. Let's plot those in, during runtime. The variables we want to look at are the mass rates in each case. Let's also track the control valve position, we can give that through a unit op recording. 
options, unit op two, and the variable we want to catch is the valve position, item 11. So our controller is, our ramp rather is disabled. We should be ready to go. So let's give it a try. Get a warning. The reason I'm getting a warning is because the ramp is disabled. And you can see as the system evolves, there's a little bit of a transient at the beginning because originally there was no flow through the valve or the controller. And as we get to the eight minutes, we can see it's reached a steady state. So let's clear out some of these runtime charts. Let's take a look at our final flow rate, stream five. And we're going to default to the mass rate. And you can see that I've reached steady state. The next thing we need to do is re enable the ramp. But before we do that, what we're going to do is tell the dynamic menu that we're going to save the current state of the system as the steady state. So now all our simulations will start with this converged steady state operation. Now we'll turn the ramp back on and let's give it a shot. You can see the first time step, second time, and our final drop down to 50,000 pounds an hour. Let's close out all these runtime charts one more time and take a look again at the flow rate of stream five. And you can see we started our initial value of 50,000. We drop down to 40,000, pop up to 60,000, and then back to where we are, or back to where we started. Let's reinitialize the system. And try taking the integral action out of the controller. So we should get some offset now. So let's give that a try just to see what happens. Obviously, nothing happens at the beginning. Obviously, I could have let this go for less than two minutes between set point changes and I would have reached a fine steady state. Let's take a look at the runtime or at the dynamic plot for stream five. And you can see we didn't make it all the way down to 40,000 or all the way up to 60,000. That's because of the proportional offset that uh, we have because we got rid of the interval action in the controller. Let's, let's clear these charts out again. Let's reinitialize the system, put the, the integral action back in. Integral time of 0.2 minutes. And just for fun, let's run it one more time. Make sure it does, once again, what we expect it to. And you can see the control valve closing as we want less flow, opening up more as we want more flow. And then as we bring the flow back to 50,000, it goes back to the original controller, the, con the original control valve setting. So that's how you set up a simple flow control loop in ChemCAD and run in dynamic mode. So at this point, you should be able to size a control valve. You should be able to link that valve to its controller, to the other elements in the flow sheet. You should be able to set the parameters for the valve and the controller, and you should be able to run the system to determine its dynamic behavior. Stay tuned for an example of a level control loop.